During the Cold War, it was meticulously and rightly argued by scholars of various stripes that the Soviet Union created what was known as godless communists. These godless communists built their ideology on Marxism slash Leninism, an essentially diabolical system that sought to eradicate religion during that era. These godless communists failed miserably largely because you cannot fight logos and win. Moreover, the fact that Russia has thrived over the years is a clear indication that Alexander Solzhenitsyn was right all along. Back in 2013, Vladimir Putin changed the political calculus by saying that much of the West was committing political suicide. How? Ideologues, said Putin, were surreptitiously declaring that faith in God is equal to faith in Satan. For many, that was an interesting move by Putin, as Patrick Buchanan put it then, in the new war of beliefs, Putin is saying, it is Russia that is on God's side. The West is Gomorrah. Putin said, many Euro-Atlantic countries have moved away from their roots, including Christian values. Policies are being pursued that place on the same level, a multi-child family and a same-sex partnership, a faith in God and a belief in Satan. This is the path to degradation. The Washington Times reported then. In his State of the Nation address, Mr. Putin also portrayed Russia as a staunch defender of traditional values against what he depicted as the morally bankrupt West. Social and religious conservatism, the former KGB officer insisted, is the only way to prevent the world from slipping into chaotic darkness. Kudos to Kevin Barrett of Veterans Today. The regime proved Putin right by applauding the Pussy Riot, a Trotskyite group that ended up having sex illiteral pornography at the Moscow National Museum. We have discussed this issue in the past. The interesting thing about all this was that neokins like Seth Mandel of Commentary were on the front line defending the Pussy Riot. But the crucial point here is that Putin, like Immanuel Kant, and even John Adams and others, understands that a nation cannot exist without objective morality, and objective morality cannot exist without logos, the essence and sustainer of the moral universe. In 2013, Putin declared, people in many European countries are ashamed and are afraid of talking about their religious convictions. Religious holidays are being taken away or called something else shamefully hiding the essence of the holiday. The Zionist regime, of course, made the false accusation that Putin was persecuting homosexuals. But Putin moved on to defuse the regime's silly argument this way. We need to respect the rights of minorities to be different, but the rights of the majority should not be in question. So yes, Putin is one of us, any serious politician who stands against the diabolical establishment is one of us. How does the regime respond to Putin's rational move? Owen Matthews, a useful idiot, declared in The Spectator that Putin has a new plan for world domination. In order to slander Putin, Matthews indirectly linked him with Willie Munzenberg, a revolutionary Jew who wanted to take the Western world to perdition at any cost. When Putin said that Russia will defend traditional values that have made up the spiritual and moral foundation of civilization in every nation for thousands of years, Matthews declared that Putin is onto something. What is it? Matthews told us, Putin's new mission goes deeper than political opportunism. Like the old communist international or Comintern in its day, Moscow is again building an international ideological alliance. He again emphasized this point so that readers could get it, and again, like the Comintern, Putin appears convinced that he is embarking on a world historical mission. He moved on to talking about Putin's conservative Comintern. At the other end of the political spectrum, David Cameron likened Putin to Hitler. John McCain, Lindsey Graham, among other usual suspects, all placed Putin and Hitler on equal footing. The real question is this, 
Why do puppets of the diabolical regime hate Putin so much? Well, Putin suggested back in 2013 the Soviet government was guided by dark forces whose ideological goggles and faulty ideological perceptions collapsed. The first Soviet government, Putin added, was 80 to 85 percent Jewish. It sounds like Putin has read Alexander Solzhenitsyn's 200 years together. If so, then it seems clear that much of the entire media had good reasons to fear him, because Solzhenitsyn made it very clear that the ethnic composition of the Soviet Union was predominantly Jewish. Putin's stance, saying enough is enough, might be why most major news outlets incessantly slandered him. Let's hope he remains steadfast in his efforts, for perseverance often leads to eventual success. It's baffling how this man keeps rising, despite relentless attempts to slander him, distort his words, and undermine his efforts. It's quite uncommon for Western politicians to entertain questions from fervent opponents for extended periods, though there have been instances of leaders engaging in lengthy discussions or Q&A sessions. Putin adeptly handles questions from vehement opponents with diverse perspectives. In his speeches and discussions, he consistently reintroduces the moral dimension to the political discourse, a crucial factor at the heart of numerous ongoing political conflicts in the Middle East and beyond. For example, in 2016, Putin declared, Many Western states have taken the way where they deny or reject their own roots, including their Christian roots, which form the basis of Western civilization. In these countries, the moral basis and any traditional identity are being denied national, religious, cultural and even gender identities are being denied or relativized. The fact that he raised the gender identity issues, which he said are being denied or relativized, is a pointed rebuke to Satanism, which basically articulates the promiscuous and incoherent idea that morality should not play any role in identifying gender and that pedophilia is simply a relic of the past. This stance also serves as a direct critique of individuals such as Sigmund Freud and Wilhelm Reich, who advocated for the pursuit of sexual liberation, regardless of consequences. Reich meant it when he postulated in his sexual revolution. The first precondition for the improvement of human and sexual relationships is the absolute break with those moral views which base their commandments either on allegedly supernatural arrangements or on arbitrary law or simply tradition. The laws of morality should also be founded on the insights gained by progressive science. Reich understood that in order for his sexual revolution to take place, morality has to be dismissed. He put it quite bluntly that we do not want to see natural sexual attraction stamped as sin, sensuality fought as something low and beastly, and the conquering of the flesh made the guiding principle of morality. Similar to the French encyclopedists, Reich knowingly succumbed to the belief that genuine science could inherently oppose morality. In truth, Morality stands as the cornerstone or pillar upon which genuine scientific endeavors are founded. Reich seemingly embraced ignorance deliberately. Following a fundamentally Talmudic ideology, he asserted that corrupting children through sexual perversion would result in intellectual insight. However, he also attempted to mask this perversion using the language of morality. Putin, in essence, is against this fundamentally satanic spirit. He again said that if there is no morality, then the degradation and primitivization of culture is a logical step. Putin said, What can be better evidence for the moral crisis of human society in the West than the loss of its reproductive function? And today, nearly all developed Western countries cannot survive reproductively not even with the help of migrants, without rules and moral values which have formed and been developed over millennia, people will inevitably lose their human dignity and become brutes. 
obviously pedophiles, neokins, and other New World Order agents, will never forgive Putin, because he is making those people look really bad. If those people are pursuing a satanic ideology, says Putin, then they are on the path to degradation. We can include people like Ben Shapiro among these people, for Shapiro himself supported the Pussy Riot, the Trotskyite group we mentioned earlier. What's the solution? People ought to adopt practical reason as their daily sustenance. Some people think that those who use the term the New World Order are some kind of conspiracy theorists who have nothing to do but to espouse crazy and outlandish ideas. Not so. The New World Order is essentially a world in which practical reason in the moral and political order plays virtually no role. The New World Order's most enduring legacy is contempt for morality and what Immanuel Kant calls practical reason in the comprehensible universe. Kant posits that the moral or universal law is the unifying force among rational beings. Therefore, any system attempting to disregard this moral law is inherently flawed, as it would inevitably lack coherence. Kant further asserts that for an action to be truly good, it is not sufficient for it to align with the moral law, it must also be carried out for the sake of the moral law itself. This brings us to a key point here. The reason the New World Order is dangerous and indeed diabolical is because it categorically denies the moral law. It also replaces the moral law with an essentially Talmudic ideology, which always seeks to destroy anything rational or orderly in the universe. This is why it's crucial to stand behind individuals whose philosophical and political perspectives uphold practical reason. It's one of the reasons why we support Vladimir Putin. To quote again Kevin Barrett of Veterans Today, may God bless Vladimir Putin, and may he continue to put the fear of God in the minds of Satanists in the United States and Ukraine.